What's going on everybody? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so I wanted to make a quick video with you guys and let you guys know what I thought about E3. I wasn't able to get right back with you guys during that period of time. My wife was in the hospital uh, undergoing some seriously life-threatening surgery. Uh, and so video games are the last thing on my mind. That's kind of why I've been kind of slow on my channel. But things are starting to warm up again. And I'm getting back into the groove of things. All right, so today I want to talk to you guys about my thoughts on E3. E3 was really exciting for me when I finally got a chance to uh, to peep it and, and see what was going on out there. The Xbox conference, Xbox won this year. That's from a guy wearing a PlayStation shirt. Um, they did win this year. They were really exciting. Uh, the Xbox One X looks stunning. The console design, everything looks great. It's really tiny, smaller than the PS4 Pro, more power. Uh, and the games they showed finally got me really amped and excited uh, for the Xbox catalog. The games. The games they showed uh, at this conference were just unbelievable. Metro Exodus uh, is another take on the Metro franchise. I was in the back of my mind thinking that this game was like uh, Skyrim or something. Or what if this is like Fallout 5? I would have really lost my mind. I mean, in my mind, I think that the Fallout series and kind of the Skyrim series with Bethesda are going to have to go in that direction to look like a Metro Exodus. To me, that game was just unbelievable the way it looked it just looks so stunning it's a game that i must play i know it was a vertical slice but if it's based on you know the real engine running on the xbox one x it's really uh exciting to see they showed minecraft <laughs> I, let me try to say this seriously they showed minecraft uh running in 4k with a new graphical patch or update and it looked really really amazing i'm not a huge minecraft fan but I do uh, dibble and dab with it. I like to get in there with my wife and make things and just fool around with the world and make arenas and play with my kids. And it looked really, really good. I'm wondering if that's going to come to any other consoles uh, because I play preferably on PS4. I got so many of them. But if it doesn't, it'll be something I get on my X. It looked really, really good. The biggest exciting thing to me that really for some reason got me amped uh, at Xbox's conference was PUBG, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. It's something that I play every now and then, you know, I'm not the biggest or best uh, PC gamer, but I, I like to get in there with my friends from uh, the Beastly Thought Show, rest in peace, and uh, play that game. And it's a really fun game, but if you're not really, you know, adequate with the mouse and keyboard, you get yourself killed quite often. I think I may have killed like three guys the entire time I played that game, and that lets you know how horrible I am with the mouse and keyboard so the fact it's coming to the xbox one xbox one x as an exclusive is super exciting to me because that's kind of my playground i love the game i love what it does i love the feeling of it and now i'll be able to experience that and it looks amazing on the xbox one x you gotta admit it looks better than anything i've ever seen on the pc as far as that game goes so i'm really excited for that anthem that game uh i know it was set up i know it was pre-planned the way that they made that game look uh, putting on the exosuit, flying out into the world, playing with your friends, and there's dinosaurs running through the landscape. Something about it just felt so magical. And the way it looked, I was like, my God, give it to me now, right? It's like a Destiny-style game where you're playing with your friends. Who knows exactly the kind of world they're, they're building, if it'll be PvP, PvE. It looked really, really amazing to me. And at the time, I thought it was an Xbox exclusive. Come to find out later, it wasn't. But that game blew my mind when I saw it. Another uh, great thing that Xbox showed off was that they're bringing the original Xbox games to the Xbox One X. Now, I know that a lot of people don't play these games. I really don't play a lot of them. But it's always fun to be able to go back just in case. You know, if you're as old as me, you remember when the Xbox came out. You remember the first games. And to be able to kind of get your friends around you, people who are as old as you, and, and just go back and relive those moments of feeling like a teenager again, I think that's pretty cool. Middle Earth Shadow of War. Now, I have Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. I didn't beat that game. Shame on me. I know I'm crazy. My wife beat that game, and she said she was going to leave me because I, I didn't really play it. That happens to me a lot, and, you know, I apologize. Sometimes I get caught up doing YouTube and doing other things. But this new Middle Earth game looked fucking unbelievable it really did look unbelievable uh the resolution looked insane uh the creatures uh, the orc that was kind of you know the good guy now and the way that they crafted these like orcs that you can control and they gave them real personality and made you really like them it just seems like they've built this game around the characters 
And to me, that feels kind of like a Lord of the Rings film or something where you're going to care about each individual orc you meet. Some might be badass, some might be real quiet, and some might be like this really funny giant orc that just talks a lot of shit. To me, that's really exciting to see the way that they're kind of changing that whole uh, dynamic from the nemesis system that was in the original game to kind of adding to it and giving these guys all this personality kind of make you really feel endeared by them. And to me, that was a big deal. Now, moving on to the whole premise of this video, we're talking about 4K resolution. Uh, 4K is a big deal. Everybody's been talking about 4K, especially Microsoft. We know that Microsoft has done quite a bit of jibber jabbing over the last six months or so, talking about the PlayStation 4 Pro, how it's 4K, not truly 4K. Uh, they've been talking smack about the fact that Sony's been using checkerboard rendering to render up to 4K to really kind of cheat the system, so to speak. And they've been really saying that the Xbox One X or the Xbox Scorpio at the time was going to be a true native system that games were going to play natively on it at 4K at 30 or 60 frames per second. And so that's really what a lot of people were expecting. I'm not a huge Xbox fan, but that was, it did wet my palate. It really made me want to see if they were really going to, you know, deliver this. And of course, I'm a huge fan of Digital Foundry. I watched some of their early mock-ups of what they thought the Xbox Scorpio was going to be. And of course, Ledbetter said, more than likely it wouldn't be able to hit true 4K. Here we go, E3, we're seeing a lot of games. I named off quite a few of them. Let's see, I named Metro Exodus, Minecraft 4K, uh, PUBG, Anthem, Forza 7, uh, the original Xbox games, and Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. The only game in that entire list that uses native 4K besides possible, in my mind at least, Minecraft would have to hit 4K. If it doesn't, there's a problem. The only true native 4K game in that list is Forza 7. Forza 7 is the only one that, that runs natively at 4K without that dreaded term which all the other games in the list use checkerboard rendering that thing that phil spencer said that the xbox one scorpio or xbox one x would not do so there is an issue there uh there is more power beyond the shadow of a doubt the xbox scorpio is capable of more but it's not capable apparently unless you get true first party exclusives on that console to do it with third party games it appears that they're using dynamic scaling dynamic resolution in games like the new assassin's creed uh, and, and that, of course, can fluctuate and checkerboard at the same time. And every other game, including games like Anthem, was using checkerboard rendering. So what does this mean for the future going forward? Microsoft was unable to deliver on their promise. At least that's the way it looks coming out the gate. There's a lot of uh, checkerboard rendering, dynamic resolutions going on. The PS4 Pro promised the same thing, 4K gaming, and they came out of the gate with checkerboard rendering, which to the naked eye, I guess, looks as good as regular 4K. I have two 4K TVs in, in my studio, and uh, when I play 4K games or even checkerboard rendered 4K games from the PS4 Pro, they look stunning, uh, unbelievable to me. And even upscale from lower resolutions in 4K, the, the techniques that Sony use or developers have used to make these games look 4K and render it 4K have, to me, been unbelievable. So as a console gamer, I'm ready to concede the fact that 4K gaming is not going to be ubiquitous ac across the board when it comes to consoles. I think the Xbox One X exclusives or um, maybe some of the games they're planning on up will have 4K capabilities. More than likely, a lot of them will have this checkerboard or this kind of mesh technique used to attain 4K resolution and 4K assets. We'll probably see more. And more as time goes on when, when developers uh, begin to really harness the power of the Xbox One X. But for now, I think that the PS4 Pro is direct competition for the Xbox One X. I think that Microsoft's big deal right now, believe it or not, is still the Xbox One S. Uh, the, the Xbox One X, while it's great, it has a lot of power, it's an attractive console, it still costs 500 bucks. And if you're going to spend $500, you're, you're really going to want that premium experience. And for a lot of people out there who aren't like me, because a lot of people aren't like me, I buy consoles just to buy them because I just like to collect. I like to talk about them. If the average person might want to buy a PC, you know, spend a thousand dollars, get a, a nice gaming PC, which outdoes the Xbox One X or the PS4 easily. So it all depends. But to me, that the whole prospect of getting a 4K, a native 4K resolution at home has kind of died. In my mind, it's kind of been blown out of the water. Okay, we can talk teraflops on top of teraflops. From what I've seen, there's still not enough to render a native 4K image at a decent frame rate because developers will be doing it. They've been working on the Xbox One X for a long time. 
PS4 Pro has been out since last November, and they still have issues getting native 4K unless it's uh, indie or something like that. So in my mind, and I want to know what you guys think in the comments, is the, the prospect of truly native 4K gaming from a home console still down the road? Do you think they're going to be able to pull this out with the PS4 Pro or with the Xbox One X in the future? In my opinion, the Xbox One X is more likely to get that. But from what I'm seeing right now, uh, they're still going to have many, many games that use this checkerboard rendering because one to one, it's really hard to tell if something is 4K or if it's checkerboarded up to 4K. I mean, I've been playing 4K games for a while now and it's still hard for me to tell. Like when I go to my PS4 uh, Pro up, up res graphics, it's really hard for me to tell if it's checkerboard or 4K and I watch a lot of 4K content. So the technique is very sound technique. It's not like a sloppy technique. They did their damn job. Uh, getting it up to that resolution and I think for console gamers on 4k TVs checkerboarding should do us just fine you guys let me know what you think in the comments below be sure to give a thumbs up guys and show support for my channel join my Facebook group follow me on Twitter and if you'd like to show your support you can always go to my patreon and pledge there I'm the beastly gamer and I'll see you guys next time <laughs>